Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Today, as you guys can see, <laughs> I'm a lot more alert and awake, uh, so you guys will be getting a lot of energy out of me today for that. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the Neo Nectar um, deck from the Ultra Rare Miracle Collection. It's the last deck that we have to do on that, and then you guys will be getting ah, new content. So. I'm going to have to figure out um, what the next video that I'll be giving you guys on, on Wednesday is because this schedule on this channel is new to me as well. Um, but we're going to get right into the video here. If you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell button so that you don't miss any of the content on the channel or the videos coming. I um, also have an announcement to make, but I will be making it for sure on Wednesday because it's kind of up in the air right now. I don't want to like announce it and then it not be a thing. So. I'm really, really excited about it though, um, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys on Wednesday. Um, also, be sure to like the video if you like the video, and uh, comment down below and let me know what you think about the deck and you know what's going on uh, with you know the current state of the game. Like, if you like standard, if you don't like standard, I'm really interested to know your opinion um, on like the state of things in Vanguard right now. Um, also. Uh, before we start, I want to uh, shout out our sponsor, Dabbers Cards and Games. They're a great local card shop in Georgia. Um, they have a bunch of stock and uh, from Japan, and so they bring in about like a bunch of card sleeves and like plushies and stuff like that. And I know it's really hard over here in America, or not hard, but it costs a lot of money for people to individually get stuff from Japan, like card sleeves and stuff like that. So this store provides that for you so that you don't have to do that yourself. And then also they have video games there, video game tournaments such as uh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters and Super Smash Brothers, which I'm sure a lot of you will be interested in after uh, Smash Ultimate comes out. And then also they support all the card games as well, um, so no one is left behind, so to speak. Uh, but they have great employees. It's a great place to interact with and chill with. They have a very cool, chill atmosphere. And so if you live in Atlanta or you're visiting Atlanta, I highly suggest you check them out. Um, and if you want to, tell them that I sent you there. Uh, but with that being said, let's get right into the video here today. So, aha, uh -huh, I never changed the name. Good job, Josh. But, um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about the uh, standard Neo Nectar deck, like I said before. Um, I kind of played with this one a little bit more than the others because, as you guys know, I'm like a Neo Nectar main, so I definitely had to, like, you know, try my hand at this and see which build that I liked best and which build I liked best ended up being this one right here. So let's get right into it. We run nine grade threes, um, which is unusual for a Forge deck, but you know, um, you know, I think it works out for this deck because you're you like your grade threes aren't clunking up your hand um, because you're doing so much like replacement and placing them on the field destruction like Neo Nectar like you can destroy all the rear guards you want and then you'll replenish and get them back so it like almost doesn't even matter um, the only thing that really matters is that they board wipe you all the way and then you just have to commit one rear guard from your hand to get three so um, Cecilia is the card that allows you to do that uh, White Lily Musketeer Cecilia V series uh, so Activation skill on Vanguard, once per turn, you can counterboss one, retire one rear guard. Then you look at five cards from the top of your deck, call up to two cards from among them to rear guard circle, and shuffle your deck. And then if you have a grade three in your soul, then you can um, call up to three cards instead of two, and three of your units in the front row get plus uh, power plus 10,000 until the end of the turn. So what this means is that this is pretty much the second grade three that you want to ride. It is our waterfall equivalent of the deck. Um, like every Force Clan pretty much has a card that you want to ride and a card that you don't want to ride first. Um, and, uh, you know, that means that you usually want to ride Exploding Tomato or if you have it, the one Maiden of Trailing Rose that we have. Uh, that's like a preferred ride. Uh, we just didn't want to run more of the main of trailing rose because we wanted to make space for our tomato here like look look at his face come on we, we got to make space for him but um but yeah like after you call your units so you want to make sure that your front row is full 
during the time at like at, while you're calling so even if you get like cards that you don't want to call but your front row is empty i would still call them or what you can do is if you have boosters you can move your boosters up into the front row and then you can activate cecilia skill which means that you won't be missing out on the 10k because the boosters will get the 10k and then you can just slide those back and play whatever and then uh or you can play whatever behind the boosters and then switch them after the skill is done uh because it's still your main phase but however if you a lot of people think that this is a continuous skill so let me debunk that and say it's not a continuous skill um if you do activate the skill and you choose to play units to your back row but not your front row and your front row is empty the only thing that will get 10k in your front row is your vanguard because that's the only thing currently in your front row so i would be very wary of that if you're new to playing Vanguard or uh, you're new to playing Neo Nectar or this deck in general. Um, next up, we have four Exploding Tomato. Exploding Tomato has a Vanguard Rearguard skill and it also has another Rearguard skill. Um, the first Vanguard Rearguard skill is Act, which means during your main phase, once per turn, you can activate this. Uh, you, the cost is retiring two plant tokens and then you draw a card and this unit gets uh, power plus 10,000. So this card becomes a really good beat stick um, just for retiring two tokens. We generate a lot of tokens in this deck. That is also something I forgot to mention. Like this is uh, Neo Nectar's new thing is that they generate tokens. Um, so the plant tokens that they generate will be 5K, grade zero, and they can boost. So um, they don't really do anything outside of that and except for feed tomato because He's a hungry boy, look at him. But he, he basically eats two plant tokens, he gets 10,000 uh, power, and then you draw a card. So it makes for a really good beater, um, because that's all standard is about really, is like beating your opponent's face in. And then at the end of the battle that it attacks, this is the other rearguard skill, um, you can retire this unit and call up to two plant tokens in your back row. Um, and then like I said, plant tokens are grade zero, power uh, plus 5,000, one critical, and have boost. So basically, um, I, what I like to do in this deck is so that I don't really have to commit as well. I like to uh, call a tomato if there's two tokens. I blow up those two tokens, draw a card plus 10, and then I attack with the tomato, and then I immediately after that retire the tomato to call two tokens. That way my front row is open for like a next turn if I want to like air my soul or something like that. Um, also, my opponent has to attack my vanguard, so you know that opens up a lot of opportunities for force to uh, dominate Excel clans and. Uh, stuff like that, but it's a really good plus really good beat stick really good card um, Then we run one maiden of trailing rows like I said um, All three of our grade threes in this deck have force so you guys don't ever have to worry about getting your force marker If you don't know what force is uh, Force is when you place a grade three with the imaginary gift force this little blue symbol in the top um, left corner of the card uh, you get a force marker, meaning that you can put the force marker on any circle, vanguard or rearguard circle on your field. And then during your turn, uh, those units get plus 10,000 power for the rest of the game. So the force marker never goes away um, from that circle. And you cannot move force markers from circle to circle either. Um, that is a recent thing that I uh, have no like, people have asked me, like, that was a thing. Um, so let's talk about Main of Trailing Roses skills. First it has a Vanguard Rearguard skill, and then the secondary effect is it has a Vanguard only skill. So the Vanguard Rearguard skill is when placed, you may call up to one plant token in a Rearguard circle, and if this card is on Vanguard circle, then you can call up to two plant tokens instead of one. Um, so what this means is that usually you want to ride this card and get the two plant tokens instead of one, but if you have to play it on Rearguard circle, it generates one token. Pretty free. Um, also comes in great combination if you're putting on the Rearguard circle, with a Sunlight Gardens Guide, but we'll talk about that later because that's like a main engine of the deck. Um, and then the secondary uh, or the secondary skill um, is an Act Vanguard skill that is during the main phase, uh, once per turn, Soul Blast one, and three of your plant tokens get plus five thousand power. So um, I know it says three exactly and not up to three, but um, you can choose like however many that you like. Um, so if you have two. Uh, plant tokens on the field and you activate this skill you can still give those two plus five thousand um, a lot of people think that you know when it doesn't say up to or whatever that you have to select that exact amount or you can't do it that's incorrect in Vanguard you do as much of the skill as you can and then you just leave the rest off basically so uh, basically if you have one two or three plant tokens you can give them plus five thousand uh, moving on to our grade twos 
Um, we have four Pansy Musketeer Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia's skill is Vanguard Rearguard skill. When it's placed, you may call a plant token to Rearguard Circle. Hands down, your best ride target in this deck, unless you have a Sunlight's Garden Guide and you rode Mirka as your first um, ride. But hands down, Sylvia is like the best ride. Like free generates you a token and like helps you begin to set up for your really really good combo plays and stuff like that. Um, or for what we can say of combo plays in a standard deck, but um, yeah, helps really helps you set up for getting your board and maintaining your advantage uh, later on. It's a big step to ride this card. Uh, trust me, guys. Um, but then next up, we have Sunlight uh, Gardens Guide. Like I was saying, combos well with anything that makes uh, tokens. When this card is placed, you call up to the same number of plant tokens as the number of plant tokens on your rear guard circle to open a rear guard circle. So basically, Sunlight Garden Gardens Guide allows you to call up to two tokens. And what I mean by that is if you have one token on the field, it can call one token, which means that that's two spaces, right? But if you have two tokens on the board and you place Sunlight Gardens Guide to the third rear guard circle, you only have two open ones left and you can only call two tokens because there's two tokens on the board, if that makes sense. So then you call that and then you're fine. Um, and then you also have to call them to open rear guard circle, so it would never be a situation where you can play Sunlight Garden Guide and then call a token over Sunlight's Garden Guide. Like, you can't do that. Um, however, this is a really, really good for setting up our tomato engine and uh, all of that good stuff. Like, in the early game, if I have it, I like to uh, go Sylvia and then get a token. Or, better yet, if you rode Mirka and you get a token, then you ride Sylvia and you get a token, and then you call Sunlight's Garden Guide, you get two more tokens, and that's a full board. And you literally didn't even have to commit, like, you did, committed one card to get a full board, basically. Um, so that's really, really good. Then we have um, our last grade two, four spiritual tree stage, Irmasol. Um, Irmasol's skill is when it's placed on the rear guard circle, if you have two or more grade zero rear guards, basically our tokens on the board. Um, counter boss one, draw a card, and all your units in the same column as this unit get plus 5,000 power, meaning that. Um, it will get 5,000 power itself, and whatever booster you have behind it will get 5,000 power as well. Moving on to our grade 1s, this is our preferred grade 1 ride. We have Dandelion Musketeer Mirka. Like I said when I was talking about the Sunlight Gardens Guide combo right here, um, this card can generate you a token on the first turn that you ride, so it's pretty awesome. Um, it's Vanguard Rigor Circle is when it's placed, Soul Blast 1, uh, call a plant token to Rigor Circle in the same column as this unit. And then the secondary ability is when it's on the rear guard circle. When your other rear guard is placed in the same column as this unit, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, so sometimes can change numbers. So basically, um, something to note with this is that, like I said, like let's say that you go first, you ride Mirka, and then you actually have two skills proc at the same time, your starter skill to draw and Mirka's skill to create a token. Now it really doesn't matter which one you do in order because they don't inversely affect each other. Um, but when you ride Mirka, you draw, you soul blast the starter, and then you uh, call out uh, a token behind Vanguard Circle. Um, that's a really, really good opening start, um, especially when you don't have a Sylvia and you have to ride Sunlight's Gardens Guide. It's Vanguard Rearguard, so when you ride Sunlight's Gardens Guide, you can still call one more token. And then if you have two Sunlight Gardens Guide, you can do the same play as Sylvia. So something that I like about Sunlight Gardens Guide is it basically doubles as a Sylvia, but it's a little better in some scenarios. Uh, moving on to our next grade one, we have four Fruit Baskets Elf. So Fruit Baskets Elf on the Rear Circle has a cost. During the main phase, you can Soul Blast 1 and retire this unit. And then you can call up to two plant tokens to rear guard circle. And if your vanguard is grade three or greater, those plant tokens get plus 5,000 power. So this card's ability is really worth using when you're on grade three and you need to get a little more of a board um, or something like that. Like maybe your opponent wiped your board and maybe you don't have any attackers. Maybe you only have like fruit baskets elf and you're like, man, what am I going to do? This sucks. And then you can actually just call fruit baskets elf, soul boss one, retire it, call two tokens, and they're automatically 10k. So a lot of times that can hit your opponent's rear guards. Or, if the tokens are on a four circle, then they can definitely hit your opponent's vanguard. Because they'll be getting 10k. Um, then, our last grade one of the deck is for Lily of the Valley Musketeer, Rebecca. Rebecca has two rearguard skills. The first rearguard skill is when it's placed, one of your other grade one or less units gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. And the secondary effect is um, at the end of your turn, Soul Blast 1 and retire one of your plant tokens, and you can return this card to your hand. So, what that means is that this card has a 
constant play, take back, play, take back ability where you play it, you give uh, something 5k that's grade 1 or less, which means that another grade 1 or your tokens. And then um, at the end of the turn, you soul blast one, you bounce it to your hand so that you can call it the next turn or guard with it on your opponent's turn. So really, really solid. Um, then as our starter, we have Broccolini Musketeer Kira, the draw card starter, pretty typical for standard. And then uh, we have eight crit, four sentinel triggers, which is made to Blossom Rain as our draw trigger PG. And then we have four watering elf, which is our V series heal as well. Um, so that concludes our um, deck profile section of the video. So we're going to start getting into the games here. Opening card fight area back for you guys right now. And then we're going to load Neos 1. Alright, so game 1, we're also playing against Neo Nectar. Not a big surprise. Pretty popular deck on card fight area right now. Um, I, for some reason, did not notice that he used Mirka, but did not call to the same column, so that did affect things, but this is the first time I was playing the Neonectar deck, so I was more worried about what I was doing, I guess, than what my opponent was doing right. Um, but I guess this whole game would have, like, that would have not been a thing, uh, that I just noticed, so, um, very important to note that out. But uh, we're calling a bunch of tokens uh, using uh, Fruit Basket Self and stuff like that. Then we check a heal and a crit. Uh, we did ride Cecilia first, that should be noted, which is fine. Like, riding Cecilia first is not bad, um, it's just not the best. So um, our opponent rides Man of Trailing Rose, attacks us, we no guard. Um, our opponent also checks a, a crit trigger. Um, and then our opponent attacks us for 30, and then attacks us for uh, for 40 or something like that. I guard it. We use Cecilia's skill to call a card, and then our opponent no guards our Vanguard. Um, I have no idea why. Uh, probably because if he PG'd it um, and dropped, like if he PG'd it and dropped a three, and I didn't check a crit, then he wouldn't have to worry about it. But I guess like either way, if I did check a crit and put it onto the that rear guard circle, um, then it would have been 40k. But he still would have survived, it just would have cost him his entire hand. Um, and I guess he just didn't want to do that. So he just no guarded and I crit him and I won. Um, starting up our game two here. Do 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 as we wait for our card fight area to open up. There we go. Alright, and we're loading Neos 2. Uh, in game two we're playing against uh, D-Robo. So our opponent goes first, rides, um, draws a card. We ride, and unfortunately we, we don't ride um, our preferred ride, but we do hit an early rush on our opponent, and he's not checking any triggers, which is great for us. We were able to put him to three damage. And then we also have the combo, so we can ride and call, um, and we're calling a full board. Then we do crit our opponent, like kind of unfair this early on, and then our opponent has to PG. And then our opponent rides a three, we're basically not really scared at all, like, he has one card in his hand, we're pretty much gonna kill him next turn. Uh, he checks that crit, but it's like, pretty much not enough, and we both know that's not enough. So I do check a draw trigger as well. I use a Cecilia skill to call an Aramisol, Aramisol skill uh, to draw, and then I attack him. And then he actually gets a, a 6 damage heal, but because of me checking a crit, um, when he wanted to pass me, like, I just put the crit all vanguard, and then that ended up being GG. Um, he basically had no chance once in the, I would say once the game got to the grade 2 stage and he wasn't checking any like good triggers, like the game was pretty much over because I had rushed him on grade 1 and he had 3 damage and in standard that's a lot. Like you might not want to be at 3 damage against any deck in, uh, on grade 1 in standard because that can be really dangerous. Game 3 we're playing against Royal Paladin here. Um, we guard his rear guard attack. We take his Vanguard, then we call uh, Sylvia calling a token, and then we call Fruit Basket to Elf, preparing for the next turn, and just a little bit so we can rush. Um, our opponent calls uh, two Pongles, so I t tell him to double Soul Charge, and one gets 5k and one doesn't because a trigger uh, was Soul Charged for one. Um, and then we check a heal trigger going back down. 
and then we uh, ride Cecilia, uh, check top, call two. We use uh, Sylvia's skill to call a token, so we got a full board, just basically for free. Uh, we do check a draw trigger, putting it on our rear guard. Our opponent checks the draw trigger as well, um, drawing a card. And then um, our opponent draws for turn, doesn't have a grade three, but doesn't G assist for whatever reason. Um, attacks our rear guard for 23, and then attacks our vanguard for 23. We uh, no guard. And it has two crit, so we take it. Um, for some reason, he twin drives. I tell him that's only single drive. He puts that card back and shuffles. We rewrite Cecilia. We call two, um, and then we attack for 31. He takes it. Uh, we attack for 38. We check a heal trigger and a crit trigger, and that ends up being the kicker. And uh, he takes two damage and loses the game. Um, obviously, it was a very unfortunate game for him. Uh, he did draw that Soul Saver at the last minute, but uh, he didn't get to use it, which is unfortunate. Um, but this deck is just like a powerhouse kind of in the early game, so it's kind of hard for mini decks to deal with, unless they are like Excel and they're attacking you just as hard. That you kind of want to hold back a little bit and um, not go as hard on them so that you can uh, defend yourself. But uh, fourth game we're playing in Shadows, I use Mirka skill to call a token. We take a damage, um, I ride Sunlight's Garden's Guide, getting a token, calling Irmasol for a little bit of a plus. Uh, we do check a crit, so that's always a really good start in this deck in the early game. And then uh, we use Rebecca's skill to destroy a uh, token and Soul Blast to, um, to bounce. And then uh, our opponent tries to use Javelin uh, when he didn't have two grade ones on the field, so I told him that he couldn't, and then he still did it, but he just like played a grade one instead, and then... I was just like, okay, please like focus from now on, and he was like, okay, kid. Uh, so I was like, okay, like on area, I guess like when you when your opponent's mad, like they always have to call you a kid or something. But uh, I attack with tomato for 23, then I attack with trailing rose, check uh, two double non triggers, and then we attack for 28, which is a great column on his uh, 10k because he would have to throw down a heal or at least guard with two cards to block it. And I assume he didn't want to do that, uh, seeing as he took the damage. Uh, but he rides Phantom Blaster using the skill to get 15k and a crit. I PG that with ease, and then um, he checks a heal, uh, going back down, and I check a heal, but I don't heal. Then I reride uh, Cecilia, getting rid of my uh, token. I call three, and then my front row gets 10k. So, like you guys just saw, I called a board off of nothing. Uh, my opponent no guards my Vanguard attack, and then I check a crit, and then I. I hit him with that GG kid <laughs> because you know I I guess hashtag petty I had to do it but anyways guys um, that has been the fourth and final game uh, for the Neo Nectar Future Fight video I hope you guys enjoyed this Future Fight video if you did be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video letting me know that you like this content and would like more of them for future sets um, hit me with a comment down below letting me know what you think of the deck what kind of decks did you make or um, what kind of cards did you are you gonna be playing in your Neo Nectar builds um, or did this help you is this the build you're gonna be playing let me know down below um, also if you want to support the channel uh, more than just liking and subscribing um, there are monetary options as well down in the description with patreon and you can buy stuff from the merch store it really helps the channel uh, grow and thrive and stay alive but with that being said, this has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.